Hey, what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today doing the what's next on Kenichi Ogawa, the newly crowned uh, IBF super featherweight champion of the world for the time being, because let's not forget he got a controversial decision victory over Tevin Farmer a few years ago. Excuse me. And then the uh, he tested positive for a steroid and had the title stripped from him. So as of now, he hasn't tested positive for anything. I think we would have seen something. So he's the new IBF super featherweight champion and has thrown himself back in the mix, seriously, at, in a wide open division. Um, you know, we got a couple kings sitting at the top, but he had a nice win over Azunga Fazil on uh, November 27th to capture the vacant title. Kind of got a gift opportunity when Shavkat Rakimov uh, had to bow out of the fight with Fazil uh, due to an injury. So, Kenichi Ogawa stepped in. Fazil was coming off of a nice win over Martin Ward, and Ogawa just pretty much outworked them um, and dominated, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, and outworked them and put the pressure on Fuzil, scored three knockdowns en route to a hard but deci decisive decision victory as he captures technically his first world title now and can push forward. So, this was a mandatory fight, but I'm not sure if the, um, if the IVF is going to um, mandate Rakimov to fight the winner. I'm not sure yet uh, to fight Ogawa, but we're going to run through the top 10 and see what's possibly next for the newly crowned super featherweight champion, Kenichi Ogawa. We start with the number one, Oscar Valdez, the WBC champion. Well, you know, Valdez was rumored to be linked to a showdown with um, Emmanuel Navarrete or the Shakur Stevenson fight, but it looks like the Navarrete option might be off the table as Navarrete is no longer with top rank, and um, there's talks about him unifying titles with Kiko Martinez at, at 126, so um, I think right now uh, a showdown with Valdez would be possible, but Valdez is supposed to be attempting to unify belts against Shakur Stevenson, but as I'm hearing, Bob Arum is not trying to make that fight for some reason, and I think that's disappointing because, uh, you know, Valdez has called out Stevenson now, but be that as it may, uh, that does leave the, possibly leave the door open for Kenichi Ogawa coming off of the win over Fazil. So, um, we're not sure of the mandatory situation. We know Zelfa Barrett is trying to become the mandatory number one contender to Ogawa, but that doesn't mean Ogawa's got to fight him next after his next fight. Uh, he might get an optional defense in and then fight uh, Zelfa Barrett later in the year. So this one's open right here for uh, possibly could be open for Valdez. Number two is the undefeated WBO champion, um, Shakur Stevenson, who just dominated Jamal Harry. Now, Stevenson was the mandatory for Harry. Um, doesn't seem to have a mandatory due can fight Oscar Valdez next if Valdez wants that fight, but I'm hearing that he doesn't. Bob Arum has also linked Shakur Stevenson and Vasily Lomachenko to possibly fight. I don't know how real that one is, but as of right now, um, uh, Ogawa could be an option for Stevenson as well, as long as he doesn't have to make a mandatory. Number three is Miguel Burchelt, the former longtime WBC champion. As of right now, the last I heard, Burchelt is likely moving up to 135 but he has not made the announcement. He has not uh, scheduled a fight at 135 yet, and so he's still here. So I don't, I don't see this fight taking place, but you never know. Number four is Jamel Herring, the former WBO champ. He's coming off of that bad loss to Shakur Stevenson. I mean, I'm sure if Ogawa wanted to fight Herring, the fight could be made, but I don't think he does. Plus, I also believe Herring is moving up to 135 as well. Number five is Roger Gutierrez, the WBA champion. Well, Gutierrez has to deal with Chris Colbert, his mandatory, uh, before he can do anything else. That fight's taking place next. They're, they're saying February, so I don't see Ogawa and Gutierrez fighting. Honestly, I, I don't think Gu Gutierrez is going to beat Colbert, so I really think that fight's going to be off the table anyways. Number um, six is Kenichi Ogawa. Number seven is... Um, uh, Shavkat Rakimov. Yeah, I think I have him seven or, or floating between five and seven right there. Uh, this might, th this fight might be possible 
if um, Rakimov comes in and says, hey, look, you know, I didn't cash in on my mandatory, but I want to fight him now. That could happen, but I haven't heard anything about that being the details. Again, they've already set up another mandatory fight, uh, went in another direction. So this fight doesn't, right now, doesn't look likely. Um, I don't think it's an option, but you never know. Number eight is, is current interim champion for the WBA, um, Chris Colbert, undefeated Chris Colbert. Well, Colbert, again, is fighting for the WBA belt against Roger Gutierrez in a mandatory fight in February. After that, you know, the door is open, but, um, you know, Ogawa and him would have to work something out. And um, I'm not sure the time frame links up for these two. But, uh, and I'm not sure there's a lot of interest as of yet, but in a wide open division, you just don't know what the interest could be. But as of right now, I'm leaning towards a no. I don't see this one. Number nine is former champion Rene Alvarado. Um, wouldn't be a bad option for Ogawa to take on Alvarado, who's coming off of back-to-back -back losses to Roger Gutierrez, but if Ogawa can go out and beat, Gut and beat him, it might uh, bolster Ogawa into the top five almost immediately. So maybe, but I'm leaning towards he might want something else, but you know, I can't rule this one out because Alvarado's a name. You know, he's, he's a name that people know. And then number 10 is Zelfa Barrett, who is fighting, I believe he's fighting this weekend, um, or next week. He's fighting on the 18th uh, to become the mandatory number one contender for the IBF title. Now, this one could happen next if the IB IBF mandates Ogawa to immediately make a mandatory defense. But I don't know if they'll do that because Ogawa and Fuzil was a mandatory title fight. But we got to see what happens there. If Ogawa can't find anything else, I think it's very likely he could get his mandatory out of the way right right now. But Ogawa being from Japan, he has a lot of options. He pretty much can choose where he wants to fight because I don't think he's tied to the, the big three networks. But that also could mean he's going to fight in Japan until he's got to make a mandatory defense. So I think the most likely option in the top ten is he'll probably fight Zelfa Barrett or the winner of Zelfa Barrett's mandatory fight. He'll probably fight there, um, and if not, he's going to fight, um, you know, it, it could be possible for Oscar Valdez or Shakur Stevenson if these two guys don't fight each other. I definitely think that's possible to grab another world title and to try to entice each other to fight to, to fight and unify more of the belts. I think that's, that, that's a big time uh, option and could happen, but we'll see what goes down. But that's it. That's the what's next on Kenichi Ogawa, the newly crowned IBF Super Featherweight Champion. I hope you guys enjoyed it. True boxing. You've been hit with the truth.